Good evening to everyone, the Action Lab. Katerina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Irago. Welcome to today's discussion, which is co-organized by the Association for Social Reform, OPEC, and the communal movement platform, Toplum Sal Haraket Platformo, THP. Our topic today is reclaiming our common European future, and it is organized in the context of the Project Citizens Forum to Reform Europe, in collaboration with the web portal of newspaper Polybis. We are happy to be hosting Mrs. Andrula Vasiliou, former European Commissioner, co-chair of the Technical Committee on Culture, and Mrs. Meltem Onurkan Samani, former general coordinator of all technical committees on behalf of the Czech Cypriot community. And of course, our coordinators, Mr. Mehmet Deria from the THP platform, and Mr. Giriagos Pieridis from OBEC. I'm Katerina Yenari. Um, and now I would like, before we start our discussion, I wish to invite our two coordinators from OBEC and THP to say a few words for our, on our bicommunal cooperation uh, between OPEC and THP. Um, Mehmet? Thank you. Oh. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, firstly, I would like to say thank you very much for Andol, Andoli, Vasiliu, Meltem Onurkan Samani, Katrina Yenari, and my friend um, Kiriakos to joining our program tonight. Uh, we established Toplum Sal Hareket Platform in 2019, but the first was the name uh, Mustafa Akinci ile Yola Devam, which was the election times for the Turkish Cypriot um, uh, presidency elections. And then after unfortunate attacks from the Turkeys um, to our elections, we lost these elections. We can't call it we lost, but we made loss. So we changed the name of the um, platform to carry on our um, fights against this, whatever happens to our uh, community. And then afterwards, we um, make um, contact with OPEC to join together to make ourselves more powerful inside the Cyprus and also outside the Cyprus to, to, do, to fight together against our country's freedom. So here we are, and then we're doing programs and uh, uh, other things about the, towards the, um, the peace in our island. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehmet. Uh, Kiriagos? I just want to thank uh, Mehmet uh, Deria for our cooperation in recent months. We do believe as a fact that we have to strengthen bicommunal cooperation because we see what is happening day by day uh, in our island. We are in a rapid way towards permanent division, Taksim, and this is a, a, a need to be on alert in order to reverse the current course uh, towards uh, division. Uh, the key question I want to raise, and that's why we have invited Andrula Vasiliou and Mertem Onurkan Samani to, to join us in this uh, discussion, is to reclaim our common European future. We, we, we believe that it is an identical aim, the unification of our island and the accession into the European Union as a normal state, all together both communities. We want to exploit the experiences of the two, Mrs. Vasiliou and Mrs. Uh, Samani. Uh, they are working for a long time, uh, both in the political field as well as in the technical committees. And we want to hear from them directly what is happening in the ground, on the ground, and what is needed to be done on the level of the civil society in order to uh, change the situation and bring on track the uh, unification movement uh, again. Uh, thank you very much, Katerina. Thank you, Kiriagos. Um, so let's kick our discussion. This is exactly the essence. Uh, uh, you both you both mentioned uh, the essence of of, of, uh, of our today's discussion. 
And it would be good to actually map out the current situation on the island and see how we identify ways to reverse this dangerous path um, towards division um, and, and see exactly what exactly the issues are, identify if there is um, a lack of interest by Cypriots or if or the leaders or none of the above, is it fatigue and how we can get the momentum going again. So uh, within this context, I would like to invite our two keynote speakers for their introductory statements, uh, and then we can continue from, from there on. Um, Mrs. Vasiliou, please, if you would like to, uh, to begin. Okay. Thank you. So good evening to everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this very interesting uh, debate uh, on tonight's uh, topic. Uh, certainly, I think we all feel that um, uh, Cyprus is going through very difficult times, and as uh, Kyriakos has said, it is uh, really recently we, felt, we feel that the division is closer to us. But we have to try as um, uh, citizens of this country to reverse this situation, and let's see how. Uh, let me remind us ourselves that in 2003, when Cyprus acceded to the European Union, the whole of the island has acceded. But uh, the acquis communitaire in the northern part of the island uh, does not apply so long as the government of the Republic of Cyprus does not have control over the north. Now, that this uh, means uh, that there are several pro problems involved. For example, the, the most fundamental principle on which the EU project relies is the three freedoms. Freedom of uh, people to move, uh, of goods and of services. That is why in 2004, the Green Line regulation was adopted in order to facilitate the movement of the people, of the goods and of services from the one side of the island to the other. Now, has this worked well? Well, for some time it worked, but on and off, we have had uh, numerous difficulties. Uh, for example, I, I know that recently there was a, a huge debate in parliament, in our parliament, uh, regarding uh, the importation of goods from the north, which uh, were supposed to be Turkish uh, Cypriot uh, goods, but they were from Turkey, or fake goods, or even the petrol from the uh, north to the south. And we know how uh, the, the, the price of petrol differs from the one uh, from the government control area to the other side because of the VAT, which applies on our side. Uh, also, there have been a lot of difficulties regarding the influx of immigrants and refugees uh, who come mainly from Turkey. So this, all these create problems regarding the uh, Green Line regulation. So instead of the Green Line regulation facilitate the movement of people and of goods and services, it hinders and uh, it creates more problems to both communities. The other thing which I want to mention just to, as an introduction is certain things which uh, uh, are supposed to facilitate contacts between people in the European Union, uh, like Erasmus, for example, the program for which I was responsible. Erasmus does not, is not, does not apply to students from the universities of the North. Why? Because uh, as we know, the authority, the re legally recognized authority, which recognize diploma diplomas of universities is the Kisats on our side. And of course, the universities in the North do not want to apply for recognition because they, they think that um, indirectly they recognize the government of the Republic of Cyprus. The same way the university, the European University Alliances, which is a recent development, which brings universities from different countries in an alliance 
to organize common projects, to common programs for their universities, and give the possibility to students, for example, to uh, have a joint degree from two or three universities which are part of this alliance. These alliances have been created exactly in order to facilitate contacts between uh, young people, make them feel more Europeans, and uh, to, feel, to make them feel that they belong to Europe. Uh, the other thing is Schengen. Schengen, we are outside Schengen because uh, we have no control over our borders, which means that we all, all Cypriots feel the drawbacks of this non-belonging to Schengen because when we travel to any airport of a country in the EU which belongs to Schengen, we have to spend at least half an hour going round to go from the non-Schengen to the Schengen area, etc. It creates a lot of problems again. Um, now coming, I don't know if I, I should speak now about our technical committees, but if you like, I can do it at a later stage. We we can we can keep it at a later stage. Okay. Uh, we already have a question about that, and uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Vasily. You have you have uh, uh, given us a lot of things to discuss about. Mm -hmm. I would also like though uh, to invite Mrs. Nukasamani to uh, give her introductory statement as well, because I'm sure we will gather a few more topics from there on, and then we can continue our discussion. Mrs. Mrs. Onokasamani, please. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. It's nice to meeting you here at this event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, OPEC and Unsal Hareket Platform for their collaboration, uh, THP and OPEC, uh, this uh, collaboration and cooperation uh, between two sides, organization, non-governmental organization, civil society is much needed. Uh, we should raise the number of uh, uh, cooperation uh, and also communication and contact as uh, here Andrea Vasilio also underlined uh, while he, he, she talked to. Uh, of course, I agree uh, with uh, uh, Andrula Vasiliu, whatever uh, she said, there are uh, efforts, uh, serious efforts, uh, uh, and sometimes limited uh, successes uh, regarding uh, facilitating uh, contact and communication, and also uh, provide uh, certain opportunities for the Turkish Cypriot community uh, from the European Union. Uh, who uh, felt much excluded and even discriminated uh, after one-sided way uh, Republic of Cyprus became the full member of uh, the EU. Uh, but the, uh, as Andrula said, uh, the Aki suspended uh, in the north. So uh, as individuals, uh, Turkish Cypriots, uh, even though they are European uh, citizens and citizens of uh, the Republic of Cyprus as well, uh, they faced uh, with uh, certain challenges that we all know. I don't know. I don't want to repeat here. Uh, I don't think that it is needed. Uh, they don't have uh, the full rights and privileges uh, that the full members in the South, uh, they, they have. Uh, so, uh, according to the barometer uh, poll uh, and research also, Turkey Cypriot community uh, felt uh, uh, very disappointed and uh, frustrated uh, because the uh, European Union uh, was supposed to be a catalyst uh, to solve the Cyprus uh, problem, to the conflict, uh, and it was widely believed in this. Uh, but uh, it, 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 it isn't the case, unfortunately. Uh, there are uh, many uh, interpretations that maybe we can discuss here, uh, but the widely accepted uh, comment is that maybe EU membership should have been tied uh, to the solution of the Cyprus problem in order to 
uh, have the European Union, which is a, a European project uh, of, of finding uh, ways and means as an umbrella uh, project uh, to bring mm -hmm. European countries uh, into a uh, in integrated mechanism to coexist peacefully. Although it is different from Cyprus, of course, because uh, European countries, they were separate uh, independent countries and they decided uh, to come together under uh, the integration uh, project of European Union. But still, uh, it is widely believed that it could have been a model of uh, bringing uh, conflicted, divided uh, societies and communities uh, together as a mediator, facilitator, uh, or neutral uh, uh, partner uh, between them. But this wasn't the case, as we have said. Uh, the Republic of Cyprus uh, became the full member and the North became, uh, as the Aki uh, suspended uh, geography or half part uh, of Cyprus. And there was no sanctions on the uh, side who would uh, refuse the uh, settlement plan as well. Uh, for this reason, the Turkish Cypriot community, uh, since they said 65% yes, to the, the Annan plan, the settlement plan uh, in, uh, in 2004, they felt as punished uh, and uh, this feed their uh, victimization uh, feelings uh, even further. Uh, I, after, after all, uh, in fact, European Union uh, developed, they try to develop uh, certain uh, programs uh, and regulations, most importantly, Green Line regulation and financial aid regulation. Uh, and as part of these, also technical committees uh, recently that we will later talk about with Andrulla, both of, the, both of us have also uh, experiences as from more or less official sites as well mm -hmm. uh, from the respective presidential uh, offices and from the technical committees inside uh, as well. But uh, there were uh, serious uh, challenges uh, in implementing uh, the regulations developed uh, and offered uh, by the European Union uh, because of, again, this uh, unsettlement. So uh, saying first what I, I'm going to say the last uh, is that uh, we learned that the main thing is to solve uh, the Cyprus uh, problem. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have uh, two sides uh, opposing two sides that they don't recognize each other politically. And this recognition issue is uh, the main, main uh, challenge uh, that uh, uh, didn't let the implementation, successful implementation of uh, various uh, projects, plans and regulations whatsoever. Still, there were uh, important uh, collaboration examples and models that we would also mention about these, but it is limited. Uh, because this uh, uh, recognition issue uh, sometimes reach to very exaggerated uh, levels uh, of uh, doing nothing uh, uh, as they used as an excuse. Uh, they were saying as a concept uh, recognition by implication, implying recognition something, these concepts, and even sometimes they refuse to use the word schools, for example. Uh, they, the, the committees, technical committees as well, we have such experiences. They were not uh, allowed sometimes to 
use certain terminology and words and instead of using schools, they were saying, let's use teachers and uh, students uh, from both communities uh, whatsoever. So uh, the level uh, was that unbelievable. You cannot uh, even uh, sometimes guess uh, on what level it can go, uh, this recognition issue. So uh, insolubility, uh, I mean, the status quo, not solving, not finding out a joint uh, settlement to Cyprus problem uh, would mean the continuation of this uh, stubbornness, uh, let me say, this rivalry, harsh uh, rivalry uh, to try to uh, convince third sides which which side is the uh, more right than the other, which side is more victim than the other, which side uh, is more, more legitimate than the other. Uh, so uh, these were, were the uh, uh, serious uh, uh, challenges uh, that uh, we should uh, discuss uh, about. I don't know if, if I should cut here or continue because both I of will us can continue. If yes, you, if of you course. Let us, we can Thank talk. you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Zorn okay. Um Actually, the, the, the issue of the technical committees at this level, I mean, it would be interesting to know, to understand um, what's, this, what's their status at the moment? What's happening? Are they, are they working? Are, they, are there committees that have stopped uh, working? Um, do we have any, I mean, we do have successes. Do we have things that we can actually build a new momentum on? Um, Mrs. Vasiliou, please. And then uh, by all means, Mrs. Ronkasamani, if you need to add, please. Um, as you know, the first committee to have been appointed was in 2008, and that was the Cultural Heritage Committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was decided by uh, President Christofias and uh, Mr. Talat. Uh, since then, many other committees have been established. And the last ones to have been uh, established was our Committee on Culture, which was in 2015, and later the one on education. Uh, no, I think also the, the, the equal rights, the gender, and ge Gender Equality Committee was also one of the latest. Mm. But anyway, uh, the committees were working uh, relatively well, uh, most of them, until Gran Montana. Gran Montana, on our part, we froze the relations. Uh, actually, we received uh, some uh, uh, directions uh, that uh, we should freeze our contacts. OK. Um, Later on, uh, I mean, uh, we started again and we had some successes again. And then we had uh, the new leadership in the North uh, as a result of which ma many members of, of many committees resigned because they were members appointed by Mr. Akinji and they felt uh, quite rightly that uh, their hands are tied, that they will not be able to work. And um, so we waited for about one year doing nothing because we didn't have any Turkish Cypriot members. And lately, uh, most of the committees, uh, new members were appointed. And as a matter of fact, uh, our Committee on Culture had its first meeting with the new membership today. I must say that uh, four women appeared, which is, is in a way good, but um, one man which is, uh, has not been able to participate. But I must say that the climate was good. And this gives me hope that uh, these are women who believe in uh, uh, joint um, <coughs> efforts and in joint projects. And we discussed, we had a brainstorming today uh, after our first meeting, uh, and many good ideas came about. We decided to reflect on them and meet again in December in order to uh, 
decide on which will be for the short term and the medium term and long term projects. So uh, I am hopeful. But again, there are committees which already are facing a lot of difficulties, like, for example, education committee. I understand the education committee uh, of which, of course, Meltem was a chair on, on her, uh, on the Turkish Cypriot uh, part, uh, did some very good work, but lately they face a lot of difficulties because of the restrictions regarding minors. You know, there have been some changes yeah. in the green line regulation regarding the movement of people and especially regarding foreign, foreign nationals and minors. Minors can only cross over if they're accompanied by both parents or they are accompanied by one parent and the other one gives a consent. consent. Yes, or if they are with somebody else, they have to have the consent of, of both parents again. Mm -hmm. And this creates enormous difficulties. So they can only th do things which uh, come up to the home for cooperation, for example, but they cannot go further because it, we had so many ideas regarding young people, how even in our committee on culture, we said we could organize joint visits to museums, to galleries, to archaeological sites on both, on both sides. But this restriction of movement of minors restricts our hands, so we cannot do much. But I understand this is also related to the protection of minors as well, though, well to be, to be always, fair. Always under 18, you have to have, mm -hmm. yes, the um, agreement of the parents. Parents. But uh, yes, it was easier before. Now there mm -hmm. are more restrictions regarding the crossover. It's not only, you know, before it, it was a general restriction, but now mm -hmm. it's in particular to the crossing over. Um, do, do you see that there is a, a potential, there is an opportunity to uh, for this positive uh, start yeah, in your committee to, uh, to move I, on to other committees I, as I well? Hope, I hope so. Uh, we have to concentrate on uh, activities which have not so much political, um, I mean, uh, insinuations, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, yes. Uh, so we concentrated on, on ideas uh, which um, uh, bring about the commonalities between our uh, two communities. For example, embroidering, lace making, uh, pottery making, um, then uh, uh, talents, young, young talents and competition and young talents. Uh, on uh, different aspects of um, uh, of arts, uh, filmmaking or mm -hmm. video making, on, uh, all these, which um, in a way we can direct the young ones to arts without having a political implication. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and we can cooperate with the Committee on Cultural Heritage. For example, if a monument which has been restored can be used, can be visited, can be visited, but also encourage young people to make a research on that monument mm -hmm. and make a video uh, giving the background of the monument in order for the people to know what what is this monument and learn mm -hmm. about it. So we can use it as a subject matter for artistic um, creation. Mm -hmm. If yes. I can raise a question directly to Meltem and Andrulla, a fundamental question comes to our mind where we are thinking that, of course, small things can make difference. But what we are facing now is serious setbacks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that we are for 17 years members of the European Union, legally, for the whole of the area, citizens of the European Union. And European Union is not here. Okay, it's a serious issue for every single person. The Europeans have, and you know better, uh, Andrew Lavasiliu, Meltem, we know from history that Europeans overcome their differences with millions of 
millions of uh, people lost in battlefields. And in Cyprus, in 21st century, we are going backwards. This is something for citizens to react. And we need to have ideas what to do on that. What do you think, Melte? If, if I can also add, Kiriagos, on this, because my question was also about the perceptions. Uh, uh, so where do we stand now in terms of perceptions of people in both communities? Yeah. Thank you. OK. Uh, I, I little bit already mentioned about the perceptions uh, in the north, uh, but here uh, I need to continue uh, about this as well. As I said in the first part uh, that I spoke, uh, that after Anan Plan, after saying uh, 65 percent yes, they felt uh, punished without deserving it. Same, same psychology uh, and same perception appeared after Transmontana. Uh, after Transmontana, uh, despite the Turkish Cypriots uh, believe that uh, Mr. Mustafa Akıncı did everything he can do, uh, and Turkish Cypriot community uh, as well, uh, immediately after the crash in the Transmontana, uh, the EU, together with the Republic of Cyprus, uh, they stopped the EU ad hoc committee. EU ad hoc committee was the uh, working group uh, in between technical committee and working group uh, established in 2016 uh, during Mr. Akinci's uh, period uh, with the commission in order to harmonize uh, the North Cyprus uh, institutions, law, legislations, uh, everything, and to raise the standards uh, close to EU standards in the North. Uh, and this was a really pity uh, because uh, punishing Turkish Cypriots so, uh, during the periods that they don't feel that they deserve it while doing this is not uh, helping. I, yeah, I should confess this and be critical about the European Union as well, uh, because this uh, methodology, I, I understand maybe it comes from the official ideology and the governmental institutions of the Republic of Cyprus. Uh, and this is the mentality and this force European Union, Union uh, to do this, but this that definitely does not uh, help uh, for example, uh, if they try to prevent the recognition uh, by implication sort of thing of the North, uh, this is not the case. It is on the contrary. Uh, it endorsed the division. Uh, it forced the Turkish Cypriots to become more and more dependent on uh, Turkey. It straightened uh, the TRNC, they, 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 they refrain to mention. Uh, it is the reverse. Whatever they, uh, they are, uh, on the back of their brain is, it resulted uh, in a reverse uh, thing. You can punish a side if uh, it, it, it doesn't uh, work or put effort uh, or in line with the settlement or rapprochement or whatsoever. But you cannot punish a, a group of people if they were trying putting effort uh, uh, for the uh, union uh, and uh, reunification of the island uh, all the time. This is the second huge uh, perception uh, from the side of Turkey Cypriots after Annan Plan. This time after Transmontana, even we try to convince them, but they cut all the communication channels as well. So the Turkey Cypriots uh, uh, during Akinci's period or during Meltem Onur Kansamani and others uh, period, maybe uh, for the personal channels uh, and networking as well, we had communicating them, but immediately after, uh, these channels are cut off, uh, and uh, this uh, does not uh, help. 
Regarding mm -hmm. the technical committees to collaborate or cooperate with each other, even the Tatars uh, government uh, here, uh, they would not have problem of uh, uh, cooperating or implementing any confidence building uh, measure because in their uh, ideology, one from state to state, you can cooperate. You know, this, uh, now uh, uh, this is what I mean. Uh, while the, these uh, means and uh, methods they were applying, it creates the reverse. They were saying now, okay, we are ready to cooperate uh, from state to state. So provocate each other to sites without finding a solution to site this problem. That's why I That's am. That's why Yes, they, they would uh, provocate each other, they would uh, support each other. Uh, the only criteria uh, to receive good results is a political will, goodwill and wish decisiveness. Uh, on, a, on a leadership on, level. And the leadership, of course, and the leadership, but uh, I Quite a while, uh, I stopped using all the time the uh, responsibility of the leaders uh, because it proved that 50 years we, we were expecting uh, from the leaders as, as godos because we need two godo to come uh, to appear suddenly to somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, Talat uh, and Christofias and they failed. And we had uh, Akunju and uh, Anastasiadis, two uh, Limassolians, and uh, two leaders who said yes to the Annan plan. This yes. will be careful about this, uh, but still uh, the uh, process uh, Did not reach, uh, The process failed. So maybe it's a chicken and egg dichotomy. Uh, if the civil society, uh, individuals, personalities, mm -hmm. we don't come together as a joint voice to put pressure, uh, not only to our, uh, our leaders, but also to raise our voice to international audience as well. Because, of course, I know we need two signatures on a settlement agreement, but uh, in fact, we have four plus. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's internationalized a, uh, a bottoms program. up approach this time yes, instead bottom, of one up. Yes, exactly. Um, bottom um, up, but still, of course, uh, it is the political will who would enable the technical committees to work. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that the members of the technical committees, even those who don't believe in uh, in, in a federation uh, a model uh, of settlement, they they would not have uh, any problems of uh, implementing uh, a confidence building measure or a project. Uh, agreed by two leaders and endorsed mm -hmm. by two leaders. But uh, since they, they, they didn't feel, uh, especially, uh, unfortunately, it was from the uh, Greek Cypriot community that they were saying to me as well that they have difficulty even to reach their leaders or their uh, presidential offices to see if it is confirmed uh, the ideas that they develop together with uh, Turkish Cypriot members uh, in the committees, this prevented them to be able to uh, proceed and deliver. Uh, okay. and a, another uh, challenge for the technical committees uh, was the budgetary pro problems. Technical committees didn't have uh, uh, autonomous uh, budgets uh, for themselves. But during our period that we were in the office, uh, European Union uh, provided a funding opportunity uh, for the technical committees. This was important because it would sort it out more than one challenges. First of all, 
they should prepare, write a project to apply for the funding. And if you have a project, this means that you have a strategy, a roadmap, an action plan. And then, like uh, the successful technical committee is uh, uh, in the example of the technical committee on cultural heritage, they worked on project-based uh, manner. Maybe mm -hmm. that's why uh, they relatively succeed in certain uh, They projects. had a plan and they implemented yes, it. Yes, they yes. had a plan, but uh, suddenly it cut, of course, uh, yes. it, 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 the, the process uh, cut after the elections. Uh, and now, again, we are uh, at the goodwill of uh, waiting for the goodwill of the uh, leaders uh, mm -hmm. to let them, to say them, okay, uh, and even give them some margins of independency and autonomous uh, uh, to act in these uh, technical well, committees. Well, so, well, so. Ah. And yeah. one last thing, and you ask, I, I before forgetting, in fact, uh, technical committees could have been perfect instruments, uh, Viriagos and Katerina, uh, to cultivate the culture of by communal, by zonal federation. Mm -hmm. Be careful what I am saying. Not cultivate of a peace culture. It should be, they should be the instruments of cultivating culture of federation. But all the time they refrained using even the word of federation. And this, this was a, in fact an, an indication that we should have seen that they don't have the will of reaching a federation. Because many times, even the members of the technical committees, uh, my colleagues, uh, sometimes from both sides, they were saying, ah, let's be strategic, Meltemo. Uh, let's not use the word federation, uh, the, the, because it has political connotations because it is politics, uh, we are technicians, we are technical mm. uh, experts whatsoever. Uh, and and I, I, I am all the time shocked because the only agreeable model of solution is the bicommunal, bizonal uh, federation under the UN framework. And this was on the first track that where they were negotiating to find out the peace agreement, the piece of paper to sign, sign in there, a legal document, okay. political document. Okay. And the second track I, should yeah. have supported, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, before you ask your question, Giago, Mrs. Vasiliou has been waiting for a long time, I think, to, okay, sorry, she would like to have her uh, uh, take on this as well. So uh, if, if I may give her the floor and then we can continue with uh, your question. Yes. yes. Um, first of all, I will say very clearly that it was a great mistake to put an end to this uh, uh, committee, which uh, informs the people of the North about the Aki Communitaire. They should be ready, and this should be our aim, so that the North should be ready to accede to the Europe, to, to be part of the Aki Communitaire as soon as a solution is found. So they have to be prepared. If we stop informing them, mm -hmm. it's as if we acknowledge that there is no hope for a solution or, for, or a hope for a reunification, which is very, very wrong. I think it's a mistake also of the European Union. They should insist that we should continue with the information of the uh, policies of the European Union in the North. The second is um, uh, a lot of people have been wondering or criticizing the technical committees, but why are they going to find a solution? No, we are, we are not going to find the solution, but in the same way as the key community should be known in, in the North and should be prepared for it, the same way, um, we should prepare the people to live together and cooperate and uh, 
and, and work together in the future. This is what reunification means. Actually, Mrs. Vasiliu, if, if uh, apologies for interrupting, but there is an interesting question in our chat about this mm -hmm. that's related to what you're mentioning, whether they're actually the technical committees, uh, whether their content or their work is being made known other than obviously the successes. I mean, would this be a way of actually involving the citizens and... and, and yeah, it, it I mean, we would love to uh, involve more citizens to our work, but it's always a question of uh, practical questions, especially this uh, movement of, uh, of, the, of the two communities across the island. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, but also I want to mention something which is very uh, pertinent, especially these days. There is a conference on the, on the future of Europe. And for the first time, it is the citizens who participate. It is the citizens who express through the citizens panel what they wish the European Union to become, what changes they would like to know, they, what, what are their concerns. And I was wondering who these citizens from Cyprus are. are. We don't even know who they are. And don't we think don't, don't we believe that the Turkish Cypriots should also be part of it to express their opinion about the future of the European Union because they are European citizens as well. So as I know how important the citizens panel are and their ideas will be uh, taken on board in order to draft the final conclusions, I think the citizens of Cyprus should be made known to us who they are, and the Turkish Cypriots should also participate. I don't know how many are participating, how many we are allowed, but in the same way, for example, as uh, uh, our seats in the European Parliament are six, but the two uh, should strictly speaking be Turkish Cypriots and four Greek Cypriots. Well, this is not the case. Thanks God we have Niazi um, Kizilurek uh, now participating and member of the European Union. But in the same way, the citizens should participate in any discussions regarding the future of Europe. Thank you. That, that, that's, one of, that's one of the reasons we have introduced the bicommunal discussions yes. in the project we are implementing as a tech. Yes, what but would, also, would... Kyriakos, if I may add also, regarding the, uh, the, the negotiations and the resumption of the negotiations between the two sides. I think all the difficulties that we have mentioned will only have a permanent solution if we have a, a resumption of the negotiations, if there is a political will to start. And I don't see many prospects in the resumption because only through dialogue we shall find a solution and will reunite our country. Yes. But I think here, the citizens, you said it before, Kyriakos, and I agree with you, now it's up to the citizens to raise their voice. I remember very clearly before the Anand plan, the mobilization of the Turkish Cypriots by the thousands. That's what we need. We need joint mobilization of citizens. And we should pass on the message both to, Europe, to the European Union and to the United Nations that it's not only up to the leaders, it's up to the citizens. And the citizens wish to have a solution. Mm -hmm. And they do, they do not, I don't think the majority would, would like to have a two-state solution. They would like to have a federal solution. Because if we have two states, of course, the division will be permanent. Yes. And, and Rula, while, while listening to you and to Melten, it's very, very clear for us that one, the leaders will decide the solution. The, the citizens cannot decide on that. Mm -hmm. But we have to avoid of being trapped from leaders. They are not interested for solution. This is the problem we are facing now. And as a definition, civil society 
should not be under the guidance of their leaders. The definition of a civil society is to work irrelevant of what the leaders wish. Of course, we are realistic on that. And we know that when we have positive atmosphere mm -hmm. and the reception of talks and the moderate leaders, uh, we, we are in the positive circle and we can do more. But what should be the case if we have this situation we are now um, uh, facing. And I do believe that there are a lot of elements we are not using, and we have to check carefully what we can do in the framework of the European Union, and even utilizing the fact that lead leaders, citizens, have more tools in their hand to work if they want to change things. We have to challenge leaderships who wants the two communities not to cooperate, for example, for pandemic. This was the case during or uh, climate change. the period. Or or climate change. Hmm? Environment, or climate. climate change, environment. Uh, there, are many, there, are, there are so many unifying factors which we can utilize. Uh, yeah. I, I think the climate change, as Katerina said, will never succeed. Any measures will not succeed if the citizens are not involved. And we are talking about citizens uh, down in the, in the uh, local, um, in the municipalities, in the regions, in the communities. Uh, we have to mobilize our people. And these elements can be used uh, later also uh, in view of a solution. Um, but I must admit that we Cypriots are a little bit, or I don't want to include the Turkish Cypriots because they have shown before that they can mobilize. Conservative. But we, huh? we are, we are, we are con conservative and passive, and passive. We accept things uh, and we should, wake up and, uh, and exert our pressure on the, on the leadership. Because on the one hand, we, had a we have a leadership who speaks clearly about two-state solution, which is not acceptable. And on the other hand, we have a leadership who is not clear what, what he wants. We, he speaks about decentralized power and he includes in the decentralization, cultural heritage. But cultural heritage, for example, is it something which is separate for the North mm -hmm. and the South? Who, who will tell uh, the Greek Cypriots that uh, uh, the Othello Tower or the Bella Pais, uh, is not does not belong to the whole of Cyprus or that Curium and, uh, uh, and other places are also be, do not belong to the Turkish Cypriots? It's, it's a unifying factor, the, the cultural heritage and culture the same. We have so many similarities in culture. We're talking about songs, dances, handicraft. They are all the same almost. What about the youth? I mean, we have seen lately that there is, that there is a movement from, from young people. We have seen it on climate change and we have seen it in other areas. So in, in, in terms of directing also the discussion to where do we go from here? How do we, how do we actually um, in, in, invigorate again interest in, in, in citizens, and not just interest, but also um, hope uh, and, and the will to, to actually formulate again as a, um, as a unit, as a civil society, uh, as a unit, and, and try and exert pressure, not just pressure, but actual projects that would, that would again, uh, create prospects, uh, uh, positive prospects, uh, uh, and accept pressure to leaders. Um, Mrs. Onokan Samani, please, if you like to start. Yes, I can start, uh, and Yerandro also can uh, uh, give her input as well, because I know that he is very much interested in the youth uh, and the kids as well. Well, uh, let me start from the Technical Committee on Education. 
uh, it was a serious and important step uh, taken by uh, Mr. Akuncu and Mr. Anastasiadis uh, in 2015. Uh, after it was again uh, November, uh, in fact, it is it, its uh, anniversary uh, would be on the 25th of November because they took the decision uh, to establish a committee, a technical committee uh, on education and to let uh, both sides, uh, schools, uh, school children uh, from all levels, from kindergarten to lyceum, except universities, there was a uh, sensitivity in there, I, I should say this. <laughs> I tried to put university, they were deleting, I, I was putting and deleting, uh, but still was an important one. Uh, and one negative, uh, demonstration from the South that the youth attended to protest uh, 15th of November, the declaration of so-called TRNC, and they uh, throw stones, the kids throw stones uh, to the Turkish Cypriots' uh, uh, car plates. Uh, if they uh, think that they are Turkish Cypriots, they throw stones uh, and certain attacks. And it was good that both leaders condemned uh, uh, such behavior and uh, they declared with a joint statement that UN also uh, published it uh, by saying that uh, the education system uh, should not tolerate such a culture of violence. Uh, this should not be the uh, way uh, that we expect uh, from the young generation whatsoever. And the education committee, despite all the challenges that I had mentioned, still, since there, were, there was the uh, goodwill and wish and the leadership at the time, not only from the leaders, but also the members were experts from both sides. Uh, and I myself directly took the co-chair of the education committee as well, uh, having in mind that the uh, subject topic is very sensitive. Uh, so uh, we managed to establish a mechanism uh, to enter into the uh, schools of the establishment of both sides and uh, monocommunally and bicommunally uh, more than 5,000 uh, kids were educated uh, peace culture education they received. We managed to uh, arrange uh, study visits across sites. For the first time they crossed to uh, south uh, and vice versa. They cross uh, to the north to visit historical places, uh, make Nicosia walk throughout the Cyprus. And uh, the last project of the education committee was to uh, prepare joint lesson plans. Of course, original idea, as you can guess of mine, was to rewrite history textbooks whatsoever. It's a very... <laughs> Uh, sensational. They said, don't mention history. I said, okay, what about textbooks? They said, don't uh, mention text, even don't mention books. And then we agreed on preparing lesson plans. Uh, even we didn't say preparing, we said developing uh, and sharing the existing lesson plans of teachers and uh, uh, build on the lesson plans whatsoever, but it was finalized. Uh, it was about uh, environment and other uh, subject topics which were not considered very uh, political whatsoever. Uh, these were good, uh, but uh, for the reasons, again, I had mentioned and said because we don't have uh, time, I, I don't want to repeat them. Uh, suddenly, of course, it cut. Now uh, it is the AHDR that tries to continue uh, this, which is a civil society organization. But it was good that one of the technical committees 
to keep the ownership of such projects in order to be enter in the establishment of the educational systems, to go into the schools, to the educational authorities, because uh, civil society as the civil society organizations, uh, we are doing this, we will continue, we should do more, we should not let, but uh, when, we, when we grasp the opportunity, uh, we should prepare uh, to leave them to do they themselves, the both mm -hmm. side authorities. But uh, as far as under, I understood, at the, uh, uh, nowadays it's not the best uh, time, time for this. So uh, I agree that uh, then non-governmental organizations, uh, citizens' initiatives, uh, civil societies, personalities should come together to do not the same thing, more courage, courageous, more uh, to educate people, inform people about the benefits of a settlement, show them that it is for the good of all, uh, show them the benefits, show them that federation is a culture of peace, nothing else is to peacefully co coexist in here. Otherwise, we, should, we couldn't go uh, a step forward uh, to, to make them to come uh, together into terms of our common past, to face with uh, our common uh, past. Maybe to, to try to establish truth commission sort of uh, going to ask. models. Yeah. Uh, models that uh, it is proved in, a, in other similar cases that it works. Uh, try to apologize from the victims, uh, no matter from which community they are, because we know that uh, sufferings uh, are common and, and that they are across, across the island without facing with, without uh, coming into terms to our past. Um, and uh, deceiving ourselves that we are strategically not mentioning such things uh, and uh, 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 running around of the uh, status quo's uh, terminology will, will keep us for one more 50 years uh, uh, more, I believe so. So the one thing I would like to add uh, about uh, our joint idea here that citizens' initiatives would be important, communicated, coordinated uh, way of uh, initiatives, because it's good that we have small and big and bigger initiatives, uh, civil society organizations, uh, NGOs, whatsoever. But sometimes uh, uh, we will need a communicating, coordinating, uh, way of approach. And we need to maybe go beyond of the European Union's uh, institutional bureaucratic mechanisms to go beyond to their citizens' initiatives, their power uh, groups, opinion leaders, uh, pressure groups that would in have influence on the decision-making mechanisms in the EU uh, institutional uh, things. So uh, citizens' uh, initiatives should speak to international uh, citizens' initiatives as well. Of course, uh, of course, uh, the more important is to influence the decision-making mechanisms, mm -hmm. for, for sure, but if we don't, uh, learn and find out the modalities to press to put pressure on them. Uh, every time uh, the our faith, uh, I mean the peace processes faith would not be deferred. If there would be a strong citizens initiative during the Transmontana period, loud in here from across Cyprus, from the south uh, especially, uh, louding uh, to their leaders. We need a settlement. You should try, you should 
give the opportunity for a, a, a settlement, at least to see who is sincere and who is not, instead of questioning there without negotiating whatsoever, uh, it would be uh, different, I believe so. Thank you. Mrs. Vasiliou, please, if you have. Yes, um, I want to uh, make one point which is, I think, very important here. We have had different initiatives by different groups at various times. We all believe in the same thing, I suppose, uh, the solution, the unification, uh, working together towards uh, the, the future. But um, we don't, sometimes we forget coordination. We should try to coordinate efforts and not think that, you know, I will ask, I will act separately because I think I am the best or the other one will act on his own because he thinks that he's better equipped. I think we should all, we should find all these groups, bring them together and try to work together towards the same, because we all believe in the same purposes, in the same, we have the same objectives. So let's see how best we can cooperate and coordinate our efforts, because we have to pass on this message that time is running short and nothing will improve from now on until and unless we resume the dialogue and until and unless we have a solution. If we don't have a solution, nothing will work in Cyprus. No, there is no future for Cyprus, either for the economy or for the climate change or for anything. We need a solution badly and we are running short of time. This is what I want to say. So it's important to identify synergies and try and unify this movement of civil society and citizens because you, you have noted that there are fragmented initiatives yes. that should also come together as a, as a whole. That's right. Um, Mehmet, Mehmet, yes, I was going to give the floor to Mehmet if there was a comment or a question that he would like to also pose uh, because we are running out of time. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to again thank you for Mrs. Vasiliu and Mrs. Onurkan Samani for joining our program. And I, I agree 100% what uh, Mrs. Vasiliu said about we need to do more for our country. We have only one island, we have only one home, which is Cyprus. And we have to work all together to do to save our country first. So we, to do this, we need to get together to be more powerful, like the, all the citizens. We know what the governments can do only by passing 47 years, which they haven't done anything, obviously, except Few years ago in Grand Montana, we come to really, really edge of the peace solution, but again, somehow it didn't happen. So we need, we, we are the, we got the power as the citizens. We have to make governments to do what citizens want. So if we get together, there are only few, we are thousands. So we can do, you know, we can make them to do what we want to do, not what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very correct, and thank you, Mehmet, because I was thinking exactly in the same way. And I want to have just, uh, my my understanding of what I heard from both of you, Mrs. Vasiliu and Mrs. Uh, Samani, is the following, that what worries me a lot is that the Europeans and others, even the UN, uh, who raised the UN Secretary General at some point raised the issue of a bottom-up procedure. They hear only the story of one who doesn't want a solution and the other who pretends he wants a solution. He's playing theater, we know that. Okay, we should not wait for them. This is not what the Europeans should hear about Cyprus. They need to hear our story. And our story is very strong. 
We have people who work together in schools, in uh, technical committees. Not the, it's not, I'm not talking about mobilizing the existing technical committees. No, they are under the strict control of the leaders. And the, I repeat, the one clearly says he doesn't want a solution, he wants two states. The other pretends he wants a solution and everybody knows that he doesn't want. I'm speaking about yes. the Europeans. But what they have, what they receive from Cyprus is the voice of these two, the leaders this only. This is what I said before, Kyriakos. This is yes. what I said before, we have to pass on our message to the European Union and to the European and to the United Nations. They should they should realize and recognize the power of the citizens and he, listen to the voice of the citizens, not only of the two leaders. Yes, they are listening always the official language of both sides, either complaining, either accusing, mm -hmm. either playing games, either feeling disappointment or frustrated of what happened. I believe that our role as civil society movements, as political movements, as whatever is outside of this, uh, we have lots of power to gather and experience to gather and go directly to them. This is Cyprus, not the other. <laughs> this is Cyprus, a slogan we are using because of the famous Al Jazeera video. This is not Cyprus we want. This is a different Cyprus we're still hoping and still striving for solution. This, this is what we believe is the need of how to act and think onwards in order to put things on track again. Maybe we fail. Maybe we will not have the leaders we need after 2023, after 2024, whatever will happen. But our, our uh, homework, we, have, we, we left out our homework, and our homework is to join forces. This is our message. This is what we are trying to do with Mehmet Derya and uh, these discussions we are organizing. I think Thank it's you. it's the perfect uh, uh, end ending comment conclude 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 remark uh, comment. Um, if I may also give again the floor to Mehmet for some uh, uh, conclusions, and then I will give the floor to our two uh, distinguished guests. Uh, Thank you. Please, Mehmet. Thanks. Um, as Mrs. Vasily said, we need to raise our voice outside the Cyprus. Because we, as on the last uh, discussion I said again, I will say again now, we talk a lot, we do a lot of protests, we do lots of things, but nothing has changed. So we need to raise our voice outside Cyprus. Uh, we know, they know uh, what's going on. But if we don't say anything, they might think that we are happy here. We are happily living here. Mm -hmm. And another thing is to, for the solution, we need a government who is, um, who is agreeing with what the citizen says. Like most of the citizen in Northern Cyprus wants the uh, feder federation, federal Cyprus. So the government at the moment, no, no, they don't want that. They want uh, separate states, which will never going to happen. We don't believe that. If that was going to happen, it would have happened in 47 years. So we don't have another 47 years to spend for nothing. Mm -hmm. So we need a government who is going to support what people say, the public says, not what the, the uh, Turkey or what other countries says. Because we are living here, not the others. So to do this, we need the right wing parties to get together, like we uh, unite again together to be more powerful. Otherwise they have no choice in the coming elections. So we're always telling this to them, but they don't take any notice, look like it. But they are going to do, lose. And because of them, we're all going to lose. So because of this, we need to raise our voice to others, you know, outside the Cyprus, but maybe they can 
listeners and they come and help. I know it's not nice to say we're expecting others to come and save us here. We have to do it ourselves, but we can't see any hope as a, as a you know, citizen here in Cyprus. I can't see any hope at the moment. So we have to do more to raise our voice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mahmoud. Mrs. Orkasamani, for some final words and message, if you like. Yes, I think uh, our message is the uh, common message uh, of this uh, web discussion, the webinar. So uh, the responsibility uh, is on our shoulders, on the Cypriots. Uh, if we don't come together and raise a joint voice uh, with the language of peace and the language of wisdom, uh, and putting pressure on first on our leaderships and then speak to uh, international audience, in, including Turkey and Greece and uh, United Kingdom, European Union, United Nations. Nobody, nobody uh, would uh, care about uh, what would happen in Cyprus as it was the case in history. Uh, unfortunately, I am a historian, academic historian, and it's full of uh, uh, waiting for nothing. Uh, uh, situations uh, in in the in the past, uh, and it it happened in fact uh, in Crans Montana. Uh, it was the United Nations uh, General Secretary who said that he didn't see any scope uh, of consensus, uh, so that he closed uh, the conference over there. It's one minute. If you don't want, you don't want. Uh, everybody has more serious issues to handle with, uh, they were saying, uh, since they don't see uh, any hot uh, conflict, hot violence uh, in here, uh, they would not turn even to look at it. But we are aware of the fact that continuation of the unsettlement uh, status quo uh, would uh, all the time uh, include the risk uh, of uh, having uh, a hot uh, conflict uh, as well. I, I, should, I should have it here. Thank you for Mrs. inviting us. Thank you. Mrs. Vasiliou? Yes, uh, what I wanted to uh, say as a few uh, last words is um, the recognition that uh, people are demoralized. They feel that uh, that's the end of the game. When we speak with people, they think that we lost their chance of solution. And we have to encourage people and give them hope. Because if we lose hope for the future, that's the end of, of, our, um, of our state, of our uh, future. So we have to keep the, the, the hope of the people alive. And in order to do that, we must bring together all the different groups that believe in the solution. They believe in a bizonal, bicommunal federation and try to work together in order to achieve some results. We have to mobilize also, as I said before, EU, United Nations, but also, for example, the UK. Recently, we had a, a, a visit here of uh, an all party delegation from the parliament of the UK. And they are interested to hear, to hear us and hear, hear from us that we still hope for a solution based on by zonal by communal uh, federation. So we have to uh, use all these forces to help us in the resumption of the talks. And I think uh, there is a chance if we, if we make our voice uh, to be heard loud and clear that we demand a solution, we demand a resumption of the negotiations, I think we have a, stand, a, a chance to succeed. Thank you. Well, um, Kyriagos, would you like to say some final no, words before I, we, uh, we I, uh, conclude? 
I, I believe that we have a good oh. starting point of how to think further. I want to thank you, Katerina Yenari, for moderating the discussion. Mrs. Vasiliu, Mrs. Samani, uh, Mehmed, my dearest friend, thank you very much for this discussion. We will uh, go on and we, we will have continue, a follow I think. What, yes. of what we have uh, come out with uh, this conclusion. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.